I'd worked with Tracy Grant Lord, who designed Cinderella previously on the production of Romeo and Juliet. I love that she invests herself so wholeheartedly with the story. I was trained as both a set and a costume designer, so I love being able to sort of create a, a complete world. Because I am invested in the, the whole look of the show, I love it when there's a harmony. Chris and I are both drawn to a sort of a contemporary classicism and Cinderella is, we wanted to create a sort of a timeless piece really. His main, his main requirement was magic. Magic, magic, more magic. I guess we stumbled upon an Art Nouveau feeling when we started working with organic shapes to create the structures on stage. I think the idea of the rose garden is pretty much Chris's signature on this production. The rose motif is one in particular where I needed something that would show the audience that we're on a journey that's bigger than Cinderella's rags to riches story, which is not rags to riches, it's, it's her finding true love and the prince finding true love. And the rose became a really important part. It's the first thing we see at the beginning of the ballet. It's what undoes the puzzle for the prince at the end of the ballet. We've got this you know, extraordinary sort of tree of rose that is the magical place where of course all Cinderella's w wishes are fulfilled. The transformation into that scene is really quite spectacular. For the detail on a lot of the costumes and particularly on Cinderella's tutu, we were very lucky to have Swarovski come on board with supplying a lot of crystals. So I designed some rose motif, which were based from the, the tree and the whole rose garden. And I adapted them for the tutu bodice and the tutu skirt, and also the roses themselves. So yeah, we were able to, you know, to give it a little bit more than is normal in a show like this. The transformations in the show, we obviously have the major transformation of Cinderella, but we also have makers who come in. So we have shoemakers, we have dressmakers, and also a dancing master who teaches them how to dance. The magical reveal into the dream sequence that is Cinderella's fairy godmother paving the way for her to get to the ball is reintroducing these makers and they have evolved into creatures inside the Rose Garden. We can still identify them as the same characters, but they are now inside the insect world. We have a grasshopper, we have spiders, and we have silk moths. And then we have, of course, the beautiful roses. So yeah, it becomes a much more organic, um, natural world, which we're all drawn to um, in, our, in our dreams. Perfect place for Cinderella to uh, to start off on her way to the ball.